call on the Tuesday he was supposed to come back that his friend actually wasn't going to drive him. So he wanted me to come pick him up. So I had to drive three hours of 29 Palms, but I couldn't drive into the base where normally they drive in to pick them up and get to say hi. He had to walk like a mile off the base to this neighborhood park, and I had to pick him up at the park. But then when I finally get into 29 Palms, he calls me on my cell phone and tells me there's two other guys from his command sitting in the park smoking just hanging out so I had to go a block away and park at a Arco gas station and wait for him to walk over from the park and then I couldn't hug him until we got out of 29 Palms because people were standing on the streets and and could have seen that so I had to say just hi hop in you know I wanted to like scream and be like oh my god and hug him and like cry but I was just like I met him at a gas station park and it felt it felt almost like I'm doing something dirty and wrong We're one of the largest military installations in the world here in San Diego. So there's so many military members here, but and whether the military wants to admit it or not, there are thousands of thousands of gay military people here. There are so many they couldn't even they couldn't even try to find which one was my partner because they are everywhere. My partner does love what he does. He's got He's got a real pride in the country. You know, he's very proud of the flag. We have a flag in front of our house. And I remember when he came back from Iraq, um, I had had the same flag up there for the entire eight months. And I it, guess it had a rip in it. I never noticed it. And I got in big trouble for that. So we got a new flag. And um, and I, he reminded me that I'm supposed to illuminate it at night. So we got a little light to illuminate it at night because I just had it in the dark. Probably about 90% of your life is spent covering up who you are. I have this photo board here and I definitely would definitely take that out. Um, basically any picture of me. I would just kind of do a sweep of the house and find any picture I could possibly find. Um, I have another one here. You know, just as, as a couple, as any normal couple would in their house, but I would take them, I would actually collect them all. Um, this award would go, this photo would go. He, it's just that he's so nervous that anyone would ask any questions about who is Ben Cartwright, why is his stuff in here? I was in a hurry, I think I had an hour to do this, and I was like, just shoving things all over the place. It was pretty complicated. God. I had to do this because um, he was having, uh, oftentimes when he goes away on deployments, he'll have his military friends actually pick him up. I don't even want to call him his friends because you, d you don't, his, I guess his coworkers, they would likely turn him in, especially some of the ones that he knows they would. And then it gets up to the higher ups and the higher ups start launching their little witch hunts that they, that they, that they like to do. It puts kind of a, a big toll on me because I have to make sure that everything is um, degayed for him. And then I, of course, disappear. I'm, I'm not here. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big gay activist, um, or I don't really like the word activist, but I, you know, I'm really involved in the LGBT community and fighting for LGBT um, rights and protections. And, and you know, I just never thought that I'd be the kind of person that would go back into the closet. I came out of the closet thir 12 years ago when I was 17 years old, and you know, I do a weekly podcast, I've been in news articles, I write in a gay paper. I'm a very outspoken person in the LGBT community, but when it comes to this, sometimes I feel like I'm going against the things I fight for. But I do realize that that's just what I have to do. I'm not going to risk his career and his life because I want to be fighting a battle. When I think about the possibility of him being discharged, especially after all of the honors and whatnot he's received, it just makes me feel angry thinking about it. You spend two, four, six, eight years in the military and they throw you out. My partner was telling me he knew someone that was dishonorably discharged that fought in Iraq, was injured. His whole service up to that point was honorable, won all these awards, then they found out he was gay. None of that mattered. Uh, he was out. It's so, so awful because if you're dishonorably discharged from the military, that ruins your future career life because, you know, you say you were in the military for this amount of time, but on your resume, dishonorable discharge, who's going to hire you? I, I sit there and I, I think about um, all the benefits and protections and different things that um, military spouses receive, obviously, in same se or opposite sex relationships. Um, and I'm in the same kind of relationship. I, I love my, my partner just like um, um, any other opposite sex relationship would with the military. 
and but I don't reap any benefits, and not that I'm in this for the benefits, but I don't reap those benefits. What I know of about military spouses is that they receive quite a, a large number of benefits. Some of the, so just a few of the things I can think of off the top of my head that I'm eligible for would be base access, for example, to go to the commissary and get all those nice deals, cheaper groceries, emergency assistance programs for military spouse families that are having financial difficulties, separation pays that he would get additional money um, while he's overseas, education reimbursements for military spouses. There's military spouse networks, um, counseling, health benefits. All of those things are available to military spouses. And you have loving gay couples that can't get married and can't reap those benefits, even though we, I think, are as deserving as any loving couple. So, so it's terrible. So there was an incident that related in a miscommunication. It was um, my partner was informed mistakenly that I died. And he, of course, was freaking out, but could not vocalize that to anyone. He just had to suck it up and he tried to, he couldn't even get to a phone for three or four days because I guess they had one phone for 275 people. And just imagine someone dying and you are in a place, the person that you think died is invisible. I was invisible. And he had to just suffer for three days till he could get to that phone. And I never answered the phone at night. He luckily got through to me that night and I answered for whatever reason at four in the morning, I answered the phone and, and I almost wanted to cry talking to him just because I realized, oh my God, what he's going through. And he was just so distraught. Of course he was trying to suck it up, but he was, he was just like, I heard you died, but thank God you answered and you're fine. And I'm like, no. And then I finally put two and two together and explained to him what the miscommunication was. But we were able to get past that. But I just can't even imagine having to live for a week or two weeks. And if, if wondering if my partner died, if I was a military spouse and I was a woman, if he found that I died, he could have he would have been flown home instantly without a fail, probably on the dime of the government. Uh, but if I died, they would have just, he couldn't have told them. And if I would have died, he would have had to wait three months till his tour ended and then come home and dealt with it. And it's just, I can't even imagine that. This is a picture she sent me. Uh, she had a mission out uh, outside the wire. And I always like it when she sends me a... Uh, email letting me know that she's back and so she sent me this picture letting me know that she was back safe if I expect her back at a certain time on a certain day um, I'm looking for that communication um, it, it's just one of those cases where no news is for um, a straight family is good news. For me, being outside of the formal chain of, of communication, no news doesn't mean anything because they're not going to contact me anyway. So she has to be the one that contacts. We have been together 19 years. I did not know that she was gay uh, until three or four months into our friendship, which uh, I think was a very, we look back on it now, it was a great way to start as we were just friends. And then at some point she, she trusted me enough to come out. So that's how we met. My partner's deployed right now. If uh, my deployment orders stay the same, we'll be fairly close to each other. Right now, we are currently slotted to go to Iraq. I joined the Army in 1985 and was on active duty until a little while after the first desert storm and then after um, September 11th. 